Tom Hardy, Woody Harrelson, and the greatest symbiote clash of the century is coming. After the first Venom film, we're all eagerly awaiting the supposedly even more impressive villainous sequel. Here's everything we know about Venom Let There Be Carnage. While Marvel Studios may reign supreme as the top dog in the comic book movie world, it's hardly the only studio bringing some of Marvel Comics' biggest names to the silver screen. For decades, Sony Pictures has brought fan-favorite Spider-Man to the movies through both live action and animation. The studio has wrung so much mileage out of the character that it's already seen him go through three iterations, beginning with Tobey Maguire, restarting with Andrew Garfield, and ending with Tom Holland. But the valuable Spider-Man IP doesn't just include any and every conceivable form of Spidey himself, including, apparently, a spider pig. It also includes all the ancillary and related characters connected to Marvel's classic Spidey story that were rolled into the original Sony licensing deal. Taking a page out of the MCU's book, Sony's begun expanding its franchise to include films that actually focus on secondary characters, even villains. In the Spider-Man canon, that means one villain first and foremost, Venom. All due respect to the Green Goblin. Venom got his first solo film in 2018, to the delight of comic book fans everywhere. Venom opened to theaters on October 5, 2018, introducing the world to Tom Hardy's interpretation of Eddie Brock, the host body of the titular symbiote. The film's release marked the first cinematic depiction of the iconic, toothy villain since teen idol Topher Grace first gave the character life in Spider-Man 3. Over the course of the Venom movie's theatrical run, it raked in roughly $856.1 million dollars at the box office, more than making back its budget of somewhere between 110 to 116 million dollars. Although it wasn't necessarily a home run with critics, casual moviegoers seemed to enjoy it. Considering the largely positive fan response and impressive financials, Sony greenlit a sequel in no time entitled Venom Let There Be Carnage. Like many other recent films, the pandemic has played a part in Venom Let There Be Carnage's delayed release date. With Andy Serkis at the helm, the film was planned to hit the big screen on October 2nd, 2020, which obviously never came to pass. Sony moved the date to June 25th, 2021, and then again to September 24th, 2021. Sony Pictures Entertainment Chairman Tony Vinciquera told Radio Times, What we won't do is make the mistake of putting a very, very expensive $200 million movie out in the market unless we're sure that theaters are open and operating at significant capacity. Fortunately, with the U.S. starting to return to normal and emerge from the troubles of the pandemic, the sequel should stick with its latest date. So, when will this movie be released? Well, as we make this video, it's slated for October 15th, 2021, but let's be honest, is that going to change? Likely. Just keep checking Looper, and we'll let you know when it comes out. Most audiences will pay to see Marvel's anti-hero Venom brought back to the big screen no matter what. But fortunately, with this film, they'll also get the chance to check out an impressive assortment of actors doing what they do best at the same time. As far as returning cast members go, Tom Hardy is coming back as Eddie Brock with his alien parasite in tow. Because honestly, who else could embody this character at this point? We are Venom. Interestingly, Hardy also earns his first story by credit on Let There Be Carnage. It's a worthy nod to his immeasurable contributions to shaping the character and the script during the long development cycle. Brock's ex fiance Anne Weying, will once again come to life thanks to the acting talents of Michelle Williams. Reed Scott is also set to reprise his role as her current flame, Dan Lewis. The big news, of course, is Woody Harrelson's return as the psychotic Cletus Cassidy, whom he portrayed in the post credit sequence of 2018's Venom. This time around, he'll finally come into his own when he is bonded with the murderous red and black symbiote, Carnage. Early looks at Cassidy and his alien parasite reveal a Harrelson completely in his element and ready to bring a new dynamism to the franchise. Alongside Harrelson, rumors are swirling that franchise newcomer Naomi Harris will play another Marvel villain named Shriek, who will likely double as Cassidy's love interest. Stephen Graham and Sean Delaney will also appear, but the nature of their roles remains unknown. Plot specifics for Venom Let There Be Carnage are still rather vague, but a few smaller ideas are floating around at the moment. It's pretty much a given that this movie will focus heavily on Eddie and Venom's dynamic as they continue adjusting to living together as one integrated human-parasite combo deal. As producer Matt Tolmack told Cinema Blend, the heart of Venom was always the relationship between Eddie and Venom. These two characters, these two sides that had to figure out how to live together and that were somehow better together than they were separately or more successful and what that meant. 
One can only hope that the two of them will be on the same page in Let There Be Carnage because, as the title suggests, a showdown against Carnage is all but a certainty. There's gonna be carnage. With the added dimension of Shriek reportedly planting herself firmly in Cassidy's camp, this sequel could spell bad news for Brock and his parasitic friend. It's also worth noting that with Sony's decision to move forward with the Jared Leto Morbius solo film, there could be space to tie the Venom continuity into an even bigger cinematic hole. Will Venom be a part of the MCU? At this point, no, he will not. But the confusion is understandable. The wide world of cinema based on classic Marvel Comics characters used to be somewhat straightforward. Before Marvel Studios was even really a thing, Marvel Comics offloaded the film and TV rights to some of its individual properties to a couple of different buyers. 20th Century Fox gobbled up the X-Men, an obvious prestige piece of the Marvel canon. It's also the reason Disney had to build Phase 1 of their MCU around the Avengers instead of the more popular mutants. In this same era of high-risk comics ventures, Sony Pictures got a hold of Spider-Man and many related characters and story elements. Interestingly, the success of Fox's X-Men films and Sony's original Spider-Man trilogy was clearly the business predicate for the creation of Marvel Studios in the MCU. Fast forward to 2021, and Disney has now reacquired the X-Men by way of its expensive acquisition of 20th Century Fox. The Spider-Man character has found his way back into the MCU as well, but only with the permission and substantial profit participation of continuing rights holder Sony Pictures. The Tom Holland Spider-Man is the result of a special business arrangement between Sony Pictures and Disney. It does not officially transfer the character's rights back to the latter, nor does it have any meaningful creative or intellectual property impact on ancillary characters like Venom. The films Venom, Venom Let There Be Carnage, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and the upcoming Morbius all exist in the Sony Pictures Spider-Verse. These properties are, at least in theory, loosely bound to each other, but they don't have anything to do with Marvel's Phase 4, Wanda's sitcom hex, or the drastic ending of Loki. Fans were quick to dissect the brief video, looking for any and every possible clue about the future of Hardy's Venom and Harrelson's Carnage. The first few seconds of the trailer are pure hearty. We see Eddie alone in the kitchen, fixing up a little breakfast for himself. Meanwhile, his body shoots out reckless black appendages that are, at least ostensibly, trying to help. A hand-drawn sign on the exposed brick wall of his apartment reads, Rules, no eating people, which seems like a pretty reasonable rule to have. In some ways, these scenes reveal an Eddie Brock more at ease with his bodily companion than he was in the first film, though there are certainly still some adjustments that need to be made. At least the two roommates are feeding together, and not on human heads. I have absolutely no problem with you sticking around, but if we do, we're gonna have to have some ground rules, right? You cannot just go around eating anybody that you want to. Later in the trailer, we get our first good look at the return of Woody Harrelson as Cletus Cassidy, still imprisoned and awaiting his execution for all of his previous dirty dealings. The trailer actually shows us a grim clip of Cassidy entering the execution booth. The executioner sets him up for lethal injection, the needle slips in his vein, and the deadly drug cocktail starts to pump. It's at this moment that the carnage organism awakens inside Cassidy, trashing the execution booth and putting an end to the proceedings. The rest of the trailer is all fast cuts and percussive action. In other words, exactly what you'd expect from a Venom sequel. It's good to know that Let There Be Carnage appears to have carried over its predecessor's black sense of humor, at least. More trailers may be forthcoming as the September 24th release date approaches, so stay tuned for any additional peaks before the whole feature at last descends upon the Spider-Verse. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more Looper videos about the Spider-Verse are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.